Hello, dear friends. Today we will look at the diary of a German soldier who experienced all the horrors of the battles for Stalingrad. The records of William Hoffmann, a German soldier who died at Stalingrad, show the decline in confidence among German soldiers as the battle progressed. While the German army achieved victory after victory in the Soviet Union's territory, he believed the new success was just around the corner and dreamed of returning home with medals. But in reality, the terrible battles in Stalingrad made him curse the war. Well now, let's begin. Today, after we had a bath, the company commander told us that if our future operations are as successful, we'll soon reach the Volga, take Stalingrad, and then the war will inevitably soon be over. Perhaps we'll come home by Christmas. July 29, 1942 The company commander says the Russian troops are completely broken and cannot hold out any longer. To reach the Volga and take Stalingrad is not so difficult for us. The Fuhrer knows where the Russians' weak point is. Victory is not far away. August 2nd. With great spaces the Soviets occupy, what rich fields there are to be had here after the war's over. Only, let's get it over with quickly. I believe that the Fuhrer will carry the thing through to a successful end. August 10th. The Fuhrer's orders were read out to us. He expects victory of us. We are all convinced that they can't stop us. August 12th. We are advancing toward Stalingrad along the railway line. Yesterday, Russian Katyushi, small rocket launchers, and then tanks halted our regiment. The Russians are throwing in their last forces, Captain Werner explained to me. Large-scale help is coming up for us, and the Russians will be beaten. This morning, outstanding soldiers were presented with decorations. Will I really go back to Elsa without a decoration? I believe that for Stalingrad, the Fuhrer will decorate even me. August 23rd. Splendid news. North of Stalingrad, our troops have reached the Volga and captured part of the city. The Russians have two alternatives, either to flee across the Volga or give themselves up. Our company's interpreter has interrogated a captured Russian officer. He was wounded, but asserted that the Russians would fight for Stalingrad to the last round. Something incomprehensible is in fact going on. In the north, our troops capture a part of Stalingrad and reach the Volga, but in the south, the doomed divisions are continuing to resist bitterly. Fantasism. August 27th. A continuous cannonade on all sides. We are slowly advancing, less than 20 miles to go to Stalingrad. In the daytime, we can see the smoke of fires. At nighttime, the bright glow. They say that the city is on fire. On the Fuhrer's orders, our Luftwaffe has sent it up in flames. That's what the Russians need to stop them from resisting. September 4th. We are being sent northward along the front toward Stalingrad. We marched all night and by dawn had reached Varapanovo Station. We can already see the smoking town. It's a happy thought that the end of the war is getting nearer. That's what everyone is saying. If only the days and nights would pass more quickly. September 5th. Our regiment has been ordered to attack Sadovaya Station. That's nearly in Stalingrad. Are the Russians really thinking of holding out in the city itself? We had no peace all night from the Russian artillery and airplanes. Lots of wounded are being brought by. God protect me. September 8th. Two days of non-stop fighting. The Russians are defending themselves with insane stubbornness. Our regiment has lost many men from the Kadyushi, which belch out terrible fire. I have been sent back to work at Battalion HQ. It must be mother's prayers that have taken me away from the company's trenches. September 11th. Our battalion is fighting in the suburbs of Stalingrad. We can already see the Volga. Firing is going on all the time. Wherever you look is fire and flames. Russian cannon and machine guns are firing out of the burning city. Fanatics! September 13th. An unlucky number. This morning, Katyushi attacks caused the company heavy losses. 27 dead and 50 wounded. The Russians are fighting desperately like wild beasts. Don't give themselves up but come close and then throw grenades. Lieutenant Krauss was killed yesterday, and there was no company commander. September 16th. Our battalion, plus tanks, is attacking the grain storage elevator, from which smoke is pouring, the grain in it is burning. The Russians seem to have set light to it themselves. Barbarism. The battalion is suffering heavy losses. There are not more than 60 men left in each company. The elevator is occupied not by men, but by devils that no flames or bullets can destroy. September 18th. Fighting is going on inside the elevator. The Russians inside are condemned men. The battalion commander says, 
the commissars have ordered those men to die in the elevator. If all the buildings of Stalingrad are defended like this, then none of our soldiers will get back to Germany. I had a letter from Elsa today. She's expecting me home when victory's won. September 20th. The battle for the elevator is still going on. The Russians are firing on all sides. We stay in our cellar. You can't go out into the street. Sergeant Major Nushki was killed today running across the street. Poor fellow, he's got three children. September 22nd. Russian resistance in the elevator has been broken. Our troops are advancing towards the Volga. Our old soldiers have never experienced such bitter fighting before. September 26th. Our regiment is involved in constant heavy fighting. After the elevator was taken, the Russians continued to defend themselves just as stubbornly. You don't see them at all. They have established themselves in houses and cellars and are firing on all sides, including from our rear barbarians. They use gangster methods. In the blocks captured two days ago, Russian soldiers appeared from somewhere or other, and fighting has flared up with fresh vigor. Our men are being killed not only in the firing line, but in the rear, in buildings we have already occupied. The Russians have stopped surrendering at all. If we take any prisoners, it's because they are hopelessly wounded and can't move by themselves. Stalingrad is hell. Those who are merely wounded are lucky. They will doubtless be home and celebrate victory with their families. September 28th. Our regiment and the whole division are today celebrating victory. Together with our tank crews, we have taken the southern part of the city and reached the Volga. We paid dearly for our victory. In three weeks, we have occupied about five and a half square miles. The commander has congratulated us on our victory. October 3rd. After marching through the night, we have established ourselves in a shrub-covered gully. We are apparently going to attack the factories, the chimneys of which we can see clearly. Behind them is the Volga. We have entered a new era. It was night, but we saw many crosses with our helmets on top. Have we really lost so many men? Damn this Stalingrad! October 4th. Our regiment is attacking the Barakati settlement. A lot of Russian Tommy gunners have appeared. Where are they bringing them from? October 5th. Our battalion has gone into the attack four times and got stopped each time. Russian snipers hit anyone who shows himself carelessly from behind shelter. October 10th. The Russians are so close to us that our planes cannot bomb them. We are preparing for a decisive attack. The Fuhrer has ordered the whole of Stalingrad to be taken as rapidly as possible. October 14th. It has been fantastic since morning. Our airplanes and artillery have been hammering the Russian positions for hours on end. Everything in sight is being blotted from the face of the earth. October 22nd. Our regiment has failed to break into the factory. We have lost many men. Every time you move, you have to jump over bodies. You can scarcely breathe in the daytime. There is nowhere and no one to remove the bodies, so they are left there to rot. Who would have thought three months ago that instead of the joy of victory, we would have to endure such sacrifice and torture, the end of which is nowhere in sight? The soldiers are calling Stalingrad the mass grave of the Wehrmacht. There are very few men left in the companies. We have been told we are soon going to be withdrawn to be brought back up to strength. October 27th. Our troops have captured the whole of the Barakati factory, but we cannot break through to the Volga. The Russians are not men, but some kind of cast iron creatures. They never get tired and are not afraid of fire. We are absolutely exhausted. Our regiment now has barely the strength of the company. The Russian artillery at the other side of the Volga won't let you lift your head. October 28th. Every soldier sees himself as a condemned man. The only hope is to be wounded and taken back to the rear. November 3rd. In the last few days, our battalion had several times tried to attack the Russian positions, to no avail. On this sector, also, the Russians won't let you lift your head. There have been a number of cases of self-inflicted wounds and malingering among the men. Every day I write two or three reports about them. November 10th. A letter from Elsa today. Everyone expects us home for Christmas. In Germany, everyone believes we already hold Stalingrad. How wrong they are. If they could only see what Stalingrad has done to our army. November 18th. Our attack with tanks yesterday had no success. After our attack, the field was littered with dead. November 21st. The Russians have gone over to the offensive along the whole front. Fierce fighting is going on. So there it is, the Volga. Victory and soon home to our families. We shall obviously be seeing them next in the other world. November 29th. 
We are encircled. It was announced this morning that the Fuhrer has said, the army can't trust me to do everything necessary to ensure supplies and rapidly break the encirclement. December 3rd. We are on hunger rations and waiting for the rescue that the Fuhrer promised. I send letters home, but there is no reply. December 7th. Rations have been cut to such an extent that the soldiers are suffering terribly from hunger. They are issuing one loaf of stale bread for five men. December 11th. Three questions are obsessing every soldier and officer. When will the Russians stop firing and let us sleep in peace, if only for one night? How and with what are we going to fill our empty stomachs, which, apart from three to seven ounces of bread, receive virtually nothing at all? And when will Hitler take any decisive steps to free our armies from encirclement? December 14th. Everybody is racked with hunger. Frozen potatoes are the best meal, but to get them out of the ice-covered ground under fire from Russian bullets is not so easy. December 18th. The officers today told the soldiers to be prepared for action. General Monstein is approaching Stalingrad from the south with strong forces. This news brought hope to the soldiers' hearts. God, let it be! December 21st. We are waiting for the order, but for some reason or other, it has been a long time coming. Can it be that it is not true about Monstein? This is worse than any torture. December 23rd. Still no orders. It was all a bluff with Monstein. Or has he been defeated at the approaches to Stalingrad? December 25th. The Russian radio has announced the defeat of Monstein. Ahead of us is either death or captivity. December 26th. The horses have already been eaten. I would eat a cat. They say its meat is also tasty. The soldiers look like corpses or lunatics, looking for something to put in their mouths. They no longer take cover from Russian shells. They haven't the strength to walk, run away, or hide. A curse on this war! At this point, the diary is interrupted. The diary was found on a murdered German soldier. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please support it with a like and subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone, see you soon.